Today, as part of this demo, let us look at some of the key strengths of Asset Management X and how this solution can deliver consolidated end-to-end -end asset lifecycle management of your IT hardware, software, right from request to fulfillment to managing software titles, all the way to retirement and disposal. Asset Management X leverages best industry practices that allow you to have better governance on assets, automate asset lifecycle process. You can improve efficiency with increased visibility into full asset life cycle, minimize wasted resources by identifying reallocating any underutilized resources. Let us go ahead and look at Asset Management X in action. Asset Configuration Management or SACM is the heart of Asset Management X. This module provides a 360 degree view on asset and all the associated components. As I land into SACM, I am treated with this dashboard which gives me a breakdown of all my assets by asset type. The dashboard provides an overview of various hardware and peripheral assets managed both as configuration items or CIs. We can drill down into specific asset type either from here or by using the drop down menu. The asset data that you see here can either be directly retrieved from CMS through our native CMS integration or can be imported through manual processes. Let's go ahead and drill into one specific asset and see what's happening with it. For our demo today, I picked up an asset of type device. I am going to choose a server. As I land into the server, I can see all the details associated with this asset, like where its life cycle the asset is. Uh, I can also manage like who's the owner of the asset, what is the subtype of the asset, what asset model is it associated with, what location is it deployed on whether it's a virtual device or a physical device, I can also manage all the contractual information that is associated with this particular server. So right now it has a maintenance contract which ends on 1-12-2022. If you plan to retire the asset, you can also set up a retirement date for the asset. If the asset is shared between multiple users, you can set up the list of users who are actually sharing the asset. Apart from this, you can also manage the asset hardware and software that is running on this asset. The asset has its own workflow on where it is and all of this is automatically predefined and available out of the box for you. But again, this could be customized and you can set up your own faces and meta faces as needed. Right now, this asset is in use and this could be either sent into prepared or retired as needed. We can also manage all the network information of this particular server. At the same time, all the related CI information can also be managed. Apart from this, we can also manage all the financial information that is associated with this particular asset, like what cost type does it belong to, what cost center is it associated with. We can manage all the acquisition details that is related to the asset, like if it's a purchase or a rental or a lease or a loan, what, when is the acquisition date, what is the total amount, like what are the terms and, and everything else. If this asset is brought into stock through our procurement module, which is inbuilt in Asset Management X, most of this acquisition information that you're seeing here is automatically pre-filled. You can also set up chargeback rules if you're doing any expense lines and manage this chargeback information from here, like if it's a recurring or a or a fixed price, you can set up the initial charges, recurring charges, the periods and currencies. Uh, you can also set up fixed assets and as I said, if you're doing expense lines, you can see all the credit and debit expense lines that are generated against this asset from in here. As we was talking about the associated contract with this particular server, let's go and look into the contract lifecycle by itself. As I go into this contract, which is a maintenance contract, that is a server maintenance, I can see all the associated information that is related to this contract. Contract management module inside Asset Management X helps manage and track contracts and associate them with relevant assets or even your software licenses or IAPs. These contracts could be your maintenance contracts, lease contracts, warranties or even service contracts. We can efficiently manage contract end-to-end -end life cycle and dependencies from creation to expiration through our contract life cycle management. Like you can create a contract, review a contract, sign it, execute it, either close it or abandon the contract. You can also see the list of all related contracts that are associated with this particular contract. There's a parent child relationship that is there. You can also manage TLCs that are associated with that contract and any financial information related to the contract. For example, if you're doing expense allocations, you can easily manage all the expense lines that are associated with this contract from in here. Now that we have moved into contract management, I want to touch base on vendor management which is very related to this. 
So the vendor management module allows you to not only create and manage vendors or vendor information and associated brands, but will also help you map all relevant contracts that you have with a vendor from a contract margin. Not only that, but you can also manage risks associated with vendors to centralize processes and workflows that are inbuilt into this module. Like you can set up a vendor under caution if you see any risk with the vendor and either move them back into active or can make them into inactive directly. You can also manage all the different vendor brands that are associated with that particular vendor and any contacts of that specific vendor. You can also have a holistic view of all the related contracts coming. As we're talking about vendors, you can also set up brands and associate them with a particular vendor or the manufacturer. Now that we have looked into asset lifecycle management, contract management and vendor management, one other very important module of asset management tech is procurement. Procurement module helps efficiently track and manage IP purchase decisions. Asset Management X helps facilitate asset lifecycle decisions with integrated procurement module. Say from here, we can create vendor catalogs, catalog items and publish them as service offering. One can also manage purchase orders and purchase order lines through here. The module helps facilitate asset receiving by creating receiving slips and performing stock management for automated processes of moving these items into stock. So it automates asset creation as soon as you receive the item. All the assets that are received through our procurement module are automatically moved into stock under service asset and configuration management. The other module that is really important for asset management X is financial management. This module helps you take control over your costs associated with assets. By understanding budgets, distributions and spends, we can stay on top of the spend and have better financial planning for future. You can set up cost allocation rules, create expense lines and manage your budgets efficiently. You can also have different budgets and budget centers available and budget lines help understand your budget versus spend. Software Asset Management or SAM is also a very crucial component of asset management. As you land in the software asset management module, you'll be treated with the dashboards which provides an overview of all products installed in your organization and their compliance status including most at risk products, assessed based on the latest compliance reports. Like here I have Adobe Atlassian, Microsoft Oracle and VMware that are defined out of the box. As I land into compliance management dashboard inside software asset management, this dashboard gives me an overview of the organization's compliance status grouped by software vendor. What you see on this card based view is the total number of products per vendor that are deployed and used in an organization, the compliance status, where we are overspending with licenses and the estimated cost to be compliant. We can also manage if there's any overutilization of licenses. Let's go ahead and look into Microsoft. As I drill down into Microsoft, I can see the compliance report of all Microsoft products that are currently being used inside the organization. From here, we can get an overview of which products are compliant and the estimated cost to make it vendor compliant and the number of versions of the product that are being deployed. If I choose Visio, I can see the different versions of Visio product that are deployed and I can see what is the balance license points and what is consumed and what is the estimated cost to make it compliant. If I go into Visio 2019 standard, I can see all the deployments of Visio 2019 standard in my asset management X. These devices that you're seeing are from asset configuration management that we just looked. Inside software asset management, using our license usage module, you can take complete control over the life cycle of your license, where is it, like when is the end of support, you can group it, you can set up filters by cost center, by cost type, you can generate notifications based out of it and be notified way ahead about if any license expirations are coming up. You can also manage license and associated contracts from in here. We have vendor certified license metrics and rules that are used to calculate the compliance. So you can see the list of all metrics that are defined by vendor. Like I have Adobe, I have IBM, ILMT, I have Microsoft, Oracle, or VMware. So you can see all the different metrics that we're using for that vendor. We also have predefined license rules that are available out of the box. And these rules are automatically updated periodically based on the uh, vendor license rules. 
we get all the consumption information of the software from our UCL DB and we apply these license rules and methods on top of it to calculate the compliance reports. This is a quick little overview of Asset Management X and how you can manage this entire asset lifecycle management starting from your procurement where you actually bring it into the life cycle all the way through managing contracts, vendors associated with it, all the financial information that is associated with it, all the software deployments made on the asset until it is retired and disposed and most of it in an automated fashion with very very minimal manual intervention. Thank you.